Uh, I want to show you the Blue Water Bridge. This connects Michigan to Canada. And I'm going to show you the river. And uh, yes, you are correct. You can get from here to Chicago or from Chicago to here by boat. So if I had a boat, I don't, but if I had a boat, I could launch that boat in the river and then take that boat all the way to Chicago, which would probably be a fun trip, but this is the Blue Water Bridge. I'll get a better view of it here in a few minutes. And I've lived in this neighborhood pretty much all my life, with the exception of a few years in Arkansas and outside of the Port Heron area. But basically I've lived in this area my entire life. Um, I grew up on it, living in a house just a couple, a couple blocks from where I live. Um, another house I went, I was at when I was a kid, that my, my mom had, is a few blocks east and north of where I live now. And a good friend of my mom's had a house down here at the riverfront, which I'll show you that property too. So I basically grew up in this area. Now, when I was a kid, there are homes on this property that you see right here on north side of the bridge where I'm at right now. There was a store up here in the corner, which I will show you where that was. And uh, I'm just going to take a walk and show you around my neighborhood. So this area right here, along this stretch of land right here, there used to be houses and businesses. When I was a kid, that hotel there was not there. It was the remains of a um, cement factory, a concrete factory. And I used to actually go over there and play. Shouldn't have, but I did. And then when they were building the hotel, when I was still a kid, I actually went through there. And uh, again, I probably shouldn't have, but I walked through it while they are building it and explored it. Also in that area where the hotel sits, there are homes at one time. And when they, when the city bought those homes, I of course had to explore those as well. It's called urban exploring. And today there are videos on YouTube just dedicated to it. Had I known that then, I probably would have videoed them and uh, put them on YouTube. But YouTube wasn't a thing at that time. I also do metal detecting and over there they tore up the sidewalk a couple years ago and I found a dime from 1871 I believe which was kind of cool so in this area right here there used to be a store a little grocery 
store um, party store type thing and uh, the kids would all come to this store in the neighborhood you know all the kids in the neighborhood would come to this store and uh, I remember going to that store a lot it was it was really one of two stores in this area that the, that you can go and buy pop and candy and whatever but now it's a parking lot unfortunately it's a parking lot now I like I like these old buildings I like it's probably one of the reason why I like coming to Chicago because of the architecture so this building on the corner has been there since uh, the 1800s and they've, they've just rebuilt this road this is a uh, Gratiot Avenue the road we just walked down is Elmwood the road we started the video on was Walnut that's where I live on Walnut we started in front of my house so this building This building has been here since the 1800s. It's the last surviving building on the block. In fact, the last surviving building on this piece of land anywhere. See, it's 1882 is when it was built. There was businesses, like you said, here, and they have photos and old maps of this area that show businesses all through here. Now what's interesting is right about here, on, where the corner would have been, and now it turns and comes this way. But at one time, that is State Street right there. And this is Gratiot Avenue. But at one time, it just came to a corner right there. It didn't actually make the curve like it does now. Um, and there was, in 1890s, there was a store that sat on that corner. And from the maps that I have, um, it was actually a house that the person had turned into a store. That person also lived in the home that I now own, which is really cool that I can find this stuff out. Spent a lot of time at the library and reading documents and looking at maps and but it's very cool it gives a connection to the area now across the street here used to be businesses and homes at that time too and here's the blue water bridge you see it's this is one that goes over to canada from port heron michigan and i will walk down to the river and i will show you a better view of that so this stretch of land right here like I said used to have homes and businesses on it in the 1800s and early 1900s and they eventually tore all this out when they built the first span of the blue water bridge which is the one you see closest to us let's see if i can do this this one right here and this one right here is the second span so the first one was built in 1938 it was completed in 1938 and the second one, I believe, was 97. So this building is also from the 1800s. I have pictures of this building back in the 1800s it's 
So there you can see the two flags, US and Canada. How's it going? So this is an interesting little field. I've learned that there was nothing ever at any time built, no structures built on this piece of land in its entire existence. It's always been vacant. And I found that out because there was some archeologists digging here a few years ago and I stopped and talked to them and what they told me was that the Indians a couple hundred years ago three four five hundred years or, or longer they're not sure but they know a few hundred years ago they used to bury their equipment in this field and they would migrate to the warmer climate and then when it got warm here again they would come back and dig their equipment up, their fishing equipment. And it was a settlement here. This is where they lived. So this is an interesting bit of land right here. This little piece of property over here is where a house sat that belonged to um, a friend of my mom's when I was a kid. And later, a few years later, you know, as an adult, I ended up moving in with him because he was getting a little older and he was needing help. So I moved in with him and uh, in 2000 or 1999, I think it was 1999, he passed away. But his house used to be here and the house that he had when he passed away was just a few blocks southwest from where I live now so yeah I've lived in this neighborhood basically my entire life like I said with the exception of a few years I, I lived in Smith's Creek which is east of Port Huron a ways and a year and a half or two years I lived in Arkansas so here's the Blue Water Bridge there's two spans I go over to Canada. Again, when I was a kid, this road right here came out to where we're walking now. But they've cut it off and made it a turnaround and Lots of changes have happened in this area since I was a kid. And yet a lot of things are the same. Like some of these old homes over here are still there. See the name of the park. So as you see, we don't have anything nearly as big as downtown Chicago. 
the tallest building we have is something that's new and it's downtown in fact you could maybe just make out the buildings over there and five stories I think the newest building down there is eight or ten stories so and he had to really fight to get that building built because the city didn't want it so this tower you see right here is a casino in Canada so there's Canada and as you see it the river lake area really does widen out just like it does Lake Michigan to where it looks like ocean like some people might think it is ocean in fact my sisters came up from Arkansas and never seen this before uh, this was 20 years or so ago and they thought this was the ocean which was kind of funny that they didn't understand the geo geology of Michigan You could take a boat from here and go north and around Michigan and come to Chicago or you could take from Chicago to here so if I had a boat I could do that it'd be a fun trip it'd probably take a while a couple days River here on the boardwalk, and uh, let you see that. And there's an old train station up here, it's not in use anymore. But in fact, the tracks you see right here used to go to the paper mill that's down there, but the paper mill had closed a few years ago, so trains don't usually come down here anymore. There was talk of putting the Amtrak train station down here. It is in Port Huron, so it is easy enough for us to get to where it's at. But it would be a lot easier if they brought it down here. You know, kind of a selfish thought, but... <laughs> I'm going to take a walk show you this area a little bit so there's Canada there's the bridge this bridge you see in front of us was built in 1938 that was the first blue water bridge and then the second one over the second span that you see right here is 1997 I believe show you the train depot that is now a museum and explain to you why it's a museum in a minute it's 
it's interesting in a few different ways. So I'm getting a glare in the video, but I'm not sure if you can see it. It's a Thomas Edison Deep Coal Museum. And it's because allegedly, you know, maybe it's true, maybe the stories aren't, but this is where Thomas Edison was uh, working on the train when he was a kid, this is the depot that he worked out of. This is the train depot that people who know the story have heard the story of Edison getting slapped in the head and losing hearing in the ear. This is the depot that supposedly happened from. And this, this is a train that is similar to the train that that event happened and that he sold his papers from apples, fruits. Now, the interesting thing about Edison is that later in life, he said that he moved from Port Huron, never wanting to come back because his experience here was so horrible. And yet, we name things after him. Edison Drive, Edison Depot. Um, the hotel here used to be called the Edison Inn. His home, they, they think used to be a little south of here. Um, where you see the condominiums over there, there's a spot that they haven't built anything on because they believe that they excavated that land and found that it was his childhood home. How exactly they know that, I don't know. Um, maybe property records of who owned what property and I don't know, maybe. But I thought I'd give you a video of the area that I live in. let you see blue water bridges they go to Canada and yes sir you are correct you can get to Canada from Chicago so like I said this is the blue water bridge looking east into Canada. I'm gonna walk this way. I'm on the grass right now, but I'm gonna walk through this parking lot. This is a convention center. They hold events here, and uh, sometimes I go to the events. It's kind of convenient having it here.
most events like Comic Con and things like that aren't as big as they would be in other places. But I still enjoy going. about 50 degrees today it's a little chilly we're at the river it's probably a little chillier kind of like a 50 degree day would be in Chicago at the river So we're back on State Street and Gratiot. You see it comes through here and makes a turn. So it goes traveling from east and turns, ends up going north. And right about in this area, According to the map, right, right about here was what looks like a house that David Moore, the person that owned my home in 1893, also owned a store there. And it looks like he took a home and turned it into a store because there's a gap here and then approximately where this is setting here more businesses were more buildings commercial buildings all the way to the corner and then going west down elmwood so i find that interesting so the article that i found of his death also says that he died at his home and they list the store as his home. So I know he owned the home where I live because I found records of him living there. But I believe that at the time of his death, he became too sick. He was sick for two years and he became too sick to manage the store and the home. And I believe he was just staying at the store at the time and died at the store while his wife was still living at the house that I have because her last known residence in Port Huron was my house and she passed away in 1950 in Detroit so I did a lot of research on, on this uh, property that I have, and I found a lot of connection to this area, connection to Detroit. She died in a home approximately eight miles from where I was, where my mom was living when I was born. You can actually see remnants of driveways and stuff that used to be here so I would I want to bring a metal detector back over here probably this summer and do some more exploring here
maybe uh, maybe sometime I'll take a walk downtown it's getting kind of chilly to walk all the way downtown it's about two miles but Maybe I'll take a take a video downtown at some time. Might get one more nice weekend or something before snow hits. So the maps that I have of this area, I have a couple, but one of the maps I have of this area is um, a hand-drawn artist rendition of the area from an aerial view from 1894, which whoever made this did an extremely good job. A lot of these homes you see over here were there at that time. Over on that corner right there, where you see a church, on the corner of this side of the road, where you see this house right here used to be a fire station in the 1800s. There was also a fire station on that side over on State Street, also in the 18 and early 19 and into the 80s, I believe. When I was a kid, there also used to be homes and businesses along State Street over there. So the neighborhood I live in is not a fancy neighborhood. It's not a bad neighborhood. We don't have a lot of issues in this neighborhood. I feel safe in my neighborhood. I feel safe pretty much anywhere in Port Heron. Of course, I feel safe in downtown Chicago as well, regardless of what people may say about it. Now what's interesting is I also seen photos of this road a long time ago and there was a trolley train that used to run down this road and go up to the corner and turn north. This is considered Port Heron, the area that I'm in. Port Heron address, Port Heron zip code. But it's also known as Fort Gratiot, which Fort Gratiot technically doesn't start until about a half mile or so north of here. But old maps would call this Fort Gratiot. They would also call it Port Heron. So it's Port Heron. Fort Gratiot area. Port Heron and Fort Gratiot is uh, probably very similar to in the way it's laid out, like the connection. Um, your neighborhood and Gold Coast. 
you you wouldn't know you crossed it and if you didn't know where the line was and so this is this is walnut this is the street that I live on and it used to come straight through and go right over to the next block. So this is my neighborhood. It's a lot of a uh, lot of history in this area. Um, for example, over here in the early 1900s, used to be a car manufacturer facility here, and. Um, of course there is no more but this is Elmwood and at one time you could go all the way down Elmwood to the end and there was a racetrack down there in the 1800s now if you go down to the end of Elmwood you're going to find the expressway and on the other side of that homes